For number 3, we are going to test whether P1 is larger than P2. And here's the information from our samples, one sample from each population. And so to choose the correct null hypothesis, we're going to assume the two population proportions are equal. And our alternative hypothesis was given. So first I want to jump into Excel and see what our sample data showed us. So plug in the numbers from our samples. It does appear that we got a slightly higher proportion from population 1 than we did from population 2. So now we need to use our methods to see whether this result is significant enough for us to reject our null hypothesis or not. And I'm actually going to use StatCrunch to solve this rather than Excel because StatCrunch has a great built-in tool for problems like this. If you go to Stat, Proportion Stats, we have two samples and with Summary when you click on that, it'll open up this screen. You just type in your sample information, and then we're doing a hypothesis test. And the way they phrase their hypothesis here, they subtracted P2 from both sides. So rather P1 being equal to P2, for our null hypothesis, they subtract it, and now it's equal to P1 minus P2 is equal to 0. And same down here. We're still doing the greater than, but they just put the P2 on the left side as well. So we have P1 minus P2 is greater than 0. So it looks a little different than we wrote it back here, but it's just the algebra of subtracting P2 from both sides. So when you hit Compute here at the bottom, StatCrunch will give you your Z statistic, and you don't have to go use a normal uh, probability table to look up the p-value because it gives you the p-value right away as well. So we have here the probability of getting the results we did or something even further to the right would be about 30 percent. So not very unlikely at all. It's a pretty high p-value. So since our level of significance was just 10 percent, 30 percent is much bigger than that, we will not reject the null hypothesis. For number four, we're constructing a confidence interval for P1 minus P2. And here's the information from our two samples. So to jump into Excel, plug that information in, and you get the proportions for each sample. And then our point estimate for P1 minus P2 is right here. So to quickly construct a confidence interval around that estimate, I'm going to use StatCrunch again. Proportion stats, two samples with summary enter in the information from the problem and then for this time we're using confidence intervals 95 percent and then hit compute and stack crunch will give you the lower limit and upper limit of your confidence interval and so we are 95 percent confident that the difference between our population proportions is somewhere in that interval for number five, our first sample group is people who were given a vaccine, and our second group, people were not given the vaccine, and we want to try to figure out if that vaccine actually had any effect. So our null hypothesis is that the two proportions of people who get sick is going to be exactly the same from, from either group. And then our alternative hypothesis is that the people who got the vaccine the proportion who gets sick is actually going to be less than the people who didn't get the vaccine, which is what we want if our drug is working. So jumping into Excel, you can see the proportions here for our sample data. There's not very much difference between the two groups, and we'll use our methods here to see if this little bit of difference is enough to actually assume that the vaccine is working and if it is, then we can reject this null hypothesis, which states that there's no difference between the two proportions. So using StatCrunch, enter in the information from your samples. We're doing less than here for our hypothesis test. Hit Compute, and it gives us our Z-stat, and our p-value is 0.01. 
Now 0.01 is less than our level of significance of 0.05, so we will reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to suggest that the people who got the vaccine, actually a smaller proportion of them got sick than those who didn't get the vaccine.